We're back once again with automobile appraiser extraordinaire, Donald Osborne. He is a uh, journalist. He writes one of my favorite magazines. He is an automotive appraiser of the highest order. So uh, let's find out. Tell us what we have. Well, Jay, we've got three rivals for the sports car enthusiast's heart in the mid-1950s. Donald, which one of these cars would offer the best investment potential? Given the great heritage and history of the Corvette, collectors are looking beyond the first-year Corvette to cars like this that begin to start the Corvette history of racing and performance. And these cars, I think, in the next five years will show significant appreciation potential. So you go with this one? I go with the Corvette. That was my choice. He is very smart. That's because he picked the same one I did. When is he wrong? <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Donald Osborne, author of Stile Transatlantico, Transatlantic Style, A Romance of Fins and Chrome. It expresses the incredible influence that America had on Italian designers and manufacturers in the immediate post-war era. Interestingly enough, uh, you'll also see in the book that while the Cisitalia is certainly quintessential Italian design, many of the elements, the waterfall grill, the portholes, actually had some, some influence from pre-war designs, specifically the Y job of uh, Harley Earl for General Motors in 1938. The Maseratis, are two of my favorite cars on the planet. A 1955 A6 2000 Frua Coupe. And the front of this car has a very exuberant, very bold chrome grille, which is incredibly similar to that of the 1955-1956 Chrysler 300C and Imperial Coupe. The other Maserati is the 5000 GT, the Car of Kings, an extraordinary GT car with the heart of a Maserati 450S racing car, which is an extraordinary thing in and of itself. But the 5000 GT also shows the transatlantic influence. The grille is just pure American jukebox. It's absolutely wonderful. It's, it's this very extravagant, very, very bold chrome, flat chrome grid that combined with the very soft, organic shapes of the car really make a great contrast and, and really illustrate this point of this uh, creative exchange between Italy and America. One of the main themes of the mid-century in car design, both in Italy and America, was the theme of the jet age. And in this car, you quite clearly see the whole fuselage aspect. It's like a jet plane for the road. There's no flat surfaces on this car at all, in plan or in section. It constantly curves. It's always moving from front to rear, from side to side, from top to bottom. It's absolutely extraordinary. And to me, that's the absolute quintessence of what this mid-century Italian style is all about. This Fiat 600 Viotti is absolutely amazing because it's completely original. It's never been restored, never been stripped, painted, reupholstered, anything. This car is more or less what it was when it left the factory, when the hand craftsman made the chrome and painted the car. It's just so special and wonderful. It's just, just emblematic of what people look for in a custom car like this. It doesn't, why doesn't it feel American? American cars aren't as nervous as this car is. <laughs> it's got a lot of power and it's got that really deep exhaust note, but it doesn't scream, so it's not Italian. But it's got very good air conditioning. German? Is the air conditioning German? <laughs> <laughs> yes, is the air conditioning German? I believe it is. Yes, okay. it is cool air, yes. It is cool air, yeah. It's uh -huh. very cool air. It's, it's cool as the mountains in Germany. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel so alpine in I this. I feel yeah. so alpine in this car. <laughs> the roof panels must come off. Uh, we have, well, feel to the front. Ah, I feel the handles. Yeah. So fair to say target-topped car? Target-topped car, indeed. That is correct. I know exactly what this is. It's the Morgan Arrow 8. It's the Morgan Arrow 8. That is yes. correct! <laughs> I'm going to analyze today Jay Leno as a collector. Anyone who has had the great blessing to visit the garage knows that Jay's tastes run a very wide range. How many people own McLaren F1s and Corvairs? Actually, there's one Corvair in this picture and one Yanko Stinger. It's probably the most radical American car ever built. And here's the funny part about it. It was deemed a failure because they only sold 1.8 million. <laughs> Mustang had sold 3 million by this time, so this car was considered a failure. The, the Yanko Stingers are collectible because Don Yanko got his own serial numbers. He got 100 of them. That's car number 54. This is uh, also one of my favorite cars of yours. That's the only Duesenberg ever designed in a wind tunnel. This Next car has some slight personal connection with you. Well, that's my 55 Buick Roadmaster. Bought that car in 1972, met my wife in that car, my wife and I dated in that car. I mean, it's, a, it's a, just a fun thing. So yeah, that was a, that's a special one. 
Can anybody find the common thread that holds all of these quite bizarre things together? Jay collects with heft. Oh, History, so emotion, fun, and technology. The key to his collection. Oh, well, thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you. Fuck up, folks. It's time to assess and caress with Donald Osborne. If you love classic cars, then Donald loves you. Okay. Our appreciation winner, Porsche Turbo. Now wait, wait. It would be this one. This is not the appreciation winner. There's only 64 of these. There are thousands of these. Appreciation in the market, however, is not determined by rarity because there are more transactions in 930 turbos than there are in McLaren F1s. When are you planning to sell yours? I want to thank Donald for being a part of the show <laughs> up to this program. And we have a new appraiser next week. <laughs> and you'll meet him, so stay tuned. I'm Donald Osborne. I'm an historian, appraiser, consultant, and writer. And my special passion is for Italian cars, specifically coach-built Italian cars in the 1940s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. 